everyone needs to have this in your house because it could even save your life. Stay tuned. Well, I bet I got your attention, didn't I? I bet you're on pins and needles. But before I tell you what I'm gonna talk about, I just wanted to give you a kind of little backstory. Doug and I had the privilege a couple weeks ago of being asked to go out to Utah to the Redmond headquarters. So they had uh, their first annual Homesteader Summit. So we were asked to go there and we got to tour the mine, the salt mine, and learn all about salt and a lot of the different products that they use in their agricultural division and also in their Redmond life for like human consumption. So we got to learn and take classes. I was dumbfounded by a few things that I had learned. When we have things here, I like to have one product that I can have multiple uses for. And this is what I want to talk to you about this product because it doesn't have one or two or three or four or 10 uses. They market this product as having thousands of uses. What I wanted to talk to you about today is bentonite clay or Redmond clay. It is volcanic ash that's been deposited in seawater from a long, 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 long time ago. It's totally ancient. So what's cool about it, it is totally natural. It's uncontaminated, no additives, no chemicals, no preservatives or anything, it's totally natural. And when we toured the mine, it's basically covering the salt mine, this volcanic ash. That's what makes the salt so pristine. There's no contaminants because this clay kind of, it's like, it's like a protector. It's like a suit of armor above the mine so that there's no contaminants. So this clay, basically, it draws out toxins through absorption when it gets wet. So it kind of turns into this superhero sponge and it can pull out impurities, bacteria, and all that kind of stuff like that. There's sodium in it, of course, and so what happens is it's gonna leave that behind and then it helps to hydrate it. And the one thing that's cool about the Redmond clay, which is different than other clays, because that's not the only place that has a bentonite clay, but what I like the best about Redmond clay is they, it's like a combination of the calcium bentonite and sodium bentonite. The sodium bentonite clay is gonna have sodium in it that helps to hydrate which is left behind, but then the calcium bentonite is gonna have all these wonderful healing minerals. So you have both, because a lot of times when you buy a bentonite clay, because there are, like I say, there's different ones. One will be more sodium and one will be more calcium. Well, this one, you're getting the best of both worlds. So when I have that, I know I can use this clay for lots of things and we're gonna go over them and your mind is gonna be blown after this video. Now, just a little, you know, FYI, I am not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I just want you guys to do your research. I'm just gonna bring you what I have learned and what I have used here personally on me, my family, friends that I know that have done this, but always do your research, always do your research, okay? All right, so what I wanted to do is talk to you about this bentonite clay. Bentonite clay, it looks just like this. It's just like a powder, all right? That's all it is. I'm gonna go over all the things that we can use it for. And at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can make the gel that you are going to keep. And the gel that you're gonna keep, which we're gonna put in this jar, is something that you can just keep, stick it in your little homesteader, you know, remedy pantry, and then that way you'll always have it in case of an emergency. Now, I want you guys to think about something. Think about animals. Animals, throughout history, now, way back when, they instinctively know if they are feeling bad, they're sick, they're wounded, they'll find clay, they'll roll in it, they'll eat it or whatever, and, and it'll help them. So they just in instinctively know the healing power of clay. So first thing I wanna talk about, bites. Any kind of bites and stings. So if you get stung by a bee, a wasp, a hornet, you know, and sometimes, you know, I've gotten stung here. I reached under on my clothesline and I got stung by three wasps at one time. So immediately I'll come in here, I get my gel and I just caked it all over it. And the neat thing about the bentonite clay, when it has the water, remember it's like a superhero, it sucks out all the bad toxins. It'll also help with your pain. Cause you know that throbbing you get from a bee sting or a wasp sting like that? It really helps with the pain and it will help with the swelling immediately. Besides the bee stings, wasp stings, hornet stings, 
Another thing that it works great for are tick bites. So I know for me, if I get bitten by a tick immediately, like if, if it's hardly even on you and then you pick it off, I get a bump there and it itches and it itches and itches for like weeks sometimes. When I started using bentonite clay and I would get one on me and then I would pull it off, go ahead and you just make your gel, your paste, you put it on there and I just leave it on there. You wanna keep it moist because if it does get dry, you know, it'll kinda of crack off. Just wipe it off and put some more on there and that will suck out the toxins. I know a lot of people are worried about Lyme disease and all that. Something like this, if you get it early on, the second you see it on your kids, on your family, on you, put that little paste on there and help it start sucking out all that bad stuff. The next thing is also like mosquito bite. So you know how mosquito bites are really itchy? Just go ahead and put it on there. It will help with the itch tremendously. And then the last one is a spider bite. So brown recluse spiders, you know, those are not good. So what happens is the second like I had gotten bitten by a brown recluse, I went ahead and I put it on and it was on my leg. I put it on and you know, it, it starts to not look very good, but I just kept putting it on and putting it on and putting it on throughout the day and just did it for days and days and it healed up very quickly. I had no problem. It didn't eat my flesh away. It just kind of was like a, a bad bite. And then after just a few days, it did go away. Now, another way to use this bentonite clay, because it is all natural, is to use it as a baby powder. You know, over the years, there's been a bad rap with the talcum powders, you know, being linked to cancers. And I know a lot of the baby powders have gotten away from some of that. Some of them are using cornstarch. It could be genetically modified. And actually, I find that the bentonite clay is probably one of the best things you can do to help prevent diaper rash, prevent the moisture, pulling out bacteria. So it works very, very well. You can just put it, if you have this, you can put it in an old spice shaker, you know, that you put your seasonings in and you can just shake it and put it, you know, all over your baby and it's very safe. So bentonite clay is one for your, your babies. Now, since this bentonite clay helps to pull out toxins and impurities, it's also good, you know, let's say you're suffering a cold or flu, you have aches and pains, possibly, you know, you have some bad bruising, you have a bad sprain, you could take a bath in it. So here's the trick to taking a bath. You're only gonna need three fourths of a cup, okay? You may find and read other places will say you need to use like a few cups. You don't need it because you do not want it to clog up your bathtub anyway, and you don't need that much. Just three-fourths of a cup in your bathtub, and you're gonna soak in it for, you know, 30 minutes or so. But it's really important that you make it have very hot water, very, very hot water, and then you're just gonna sit and relax. If you wanna have a nice drink of our chocolate tea when you're taking your bath, and then that way it's gonna pull out the toxins and the impurities from you. It's gonna help with any pain that you're feeling and help you feel good. So just like the animals, we can be rolling in the clay just like them to help us heal. The next one you can use betonite clay for is if you are going through chemotherapy because it could help with some of the side effects and how you're feeling because you don't feel very good when you go through chemotherapy. So if you did take a bath, you know, with three-fourths cup of the bentonite clay in your bath, or you could take a foot bath because you're gonna absorb a lot of toxins from your feet. So if you're gonna do a foot bath, then you can do about two tablespoons in some hot water and just let your feet soak for 30 minutes and it's gonna pull out all the impurities. Now I wanna tell you guys a little note. If you are taking a bath or using a foot bath to do this detoxification, do not use that on your garden or don't use that you know, anywhere because it's gonna have all the toxins in it. You might wanna use it to put on the weeds on your driveway or something like that, but it's gonna pull out all the toxins, so definitely don't use it on your garden because you'll kill your plants. Now this clay is really good for lots of different skin issues. So if you have a, a rash, you know, that you don't know where it came from, or you have eczema or psoriasis, or it's also good for shingles because shingles are very painful. So it can help with the pain relief. So that's something that you might want to try possibly on that too. Now, when we went to the Home Center Summit, I learned this and I thought it was totally amazing. And sure, probably Doug will have something like this happen to him. And I'll be interested to, to use it on him. But they were talking about people who have road rash, 
Maybe you fall down or if you're on a bike or a motorcycle or a four-wheeler or fall and you get road rash and you get the rocks and the pebbles and they get stuck in your skin and you have that bad scratch. And you know how when you get that road rash, it really does hurt. They say that to put the clay on it, it really helps with the pain and it helps to draw and pull out those little pieces of rocks and things that get on you. They were talking about um, the fiberglass. You know, someone had slid down fiberglass and you know you're getting those shards inside of you those little bitty pieces as well as children with splinters that don't want you to take a splinter out you could just put some of that on there a nice glop of it and let it stay on there and then go ahead and just wipe it off and hopefully it can pull the splinter out and it'll pull out the, the rocks from the road rash or the fiberglass pieces or you know whatever you have. If you're putting that on there, I would keep it kind of moist. So you could put a towel over it or maybe put some plastic wrap over it to keep it moist or just if you're around, just make sure that you're keeping it wet. I've had, it's funny, I guess within the past year I've had four different people say, what can I do for a boil? And uh, I said, I got something you should try. Actually, it was the bentonite clay. I told them what to do, and I gave them a little bit of it. And they said it was crazy how it totally shrunk the boil. So I know personally from people that I've told that, that this has worked. So I always tell you guys, do your research. You know, do what you need to do. But these are things so far that have really helped me here. Now, another way to use your bentonite clay is on a bad sunburn on your shoulder or maybe possibly on your face. Uh, you can go ahead and do the same thing, put it on your face. But with burns, it is very important you do not let it dry out because what'll happen, it'll dry. You know how when you get a put a mask on, you know, it'll really make your face tight and pull it. So if I burned it on my stove or you had a burn on your arm or your leg, you want to keep it moist. So if you had a very bad burn, I would wrap it in a towel or a piece of cloth or some plastic wrap to keep the moisture there and then <clears throat> you know, wait a few hours and then maybe rinse it off and put some more on. And it really is good at healing it. They were saying some people, you know, had some major burns and just putting that on there and how it really helped with the pain because burns are very painful. So we have animals here on the homestead. You know, we raise sheep. So when it's lambing season, some of the moms will get mastitis. So this is something good that we can use on our livestock. So if you have cows or if you're having horses or if you're having goats, and you need a little help and you're having mastitis, it's gonna draw the heat out because when they do have mastitis, it gets very red, it's painful. So this is gonna help with the pain. It's also gonna help with the swelling. It's gonna help draw out the impurities. It can really make a huge difference than possibly if you could get all that out that the mom will be fine to help, you know, raise her baby without you having to bottle feed it. Now the next thing you can use bentonite clay for is for your toothpaste. I make homemade tooth powder here and you guys, I'm not going to tell you how to make it in this video because you need to go back and watch my video on how to make homemade tooth powder. It is the most amazing way to take care of your teeth because it pulls out all the impurities, it helps to remineralize your teeth, it helps to keep your gums and teeth healthy, it's just amazing. And when you brush with this tooth powder, it'll feel cleaner than any paste that you've ever used because it's very, very, very cleaning. So go and watch that video, homemade tooth powder as well as it's really good for a deodorant, you know, under your arms to help absorb odors. And what I'm gonna do, if you guys stay tuned to the very, very end of this video, I will show you how to make homemade deodorant with the bentonite clay. So stay to the end. And finally, if you guys are concerned with the possibility of heavy metals or toxins from vaccinations, you could make a poultice which is, you know, you're gonna put a big glob of it on the, all over your feet and you wrap your feet in plastic wrap and then put your socks on and go to sleep, okay? And in the morning, you can wash it off and while you're sleeping, it's gonna pull out all those toxins from your body and then um, you might wanna do it for a couple days and see, you know, how you feel. So that is the last one I wanna to talk to you guys about today. Now let's get started and we're gonna make some of this bentonite gel. Now this is gonna be so hard. Are <laughs> you ready? All it is is no matter how you do it, whatever size jar you use, it's two parts of water, some good filtered water. I wouldn't use chlorinated water, filtered water. It could be well water too, it would be fine. And then to one part bentonite clay. 
So I'm gonna fill this whole jar up. Now do you see I'm using a wooden spoon? Use a plastic or wooden spoon because if you use a metal spoon with this clay, it could kind of like deactivate it and it won't be as powerful. So I always use wooden or plastic. All right, so here, this is gonna be my one part. So that means some people are confused when we talk about one part this, two parts that. So this is one part. So two parts, I'm just gonna double it. So I'm gonna go to here with my water. Are you ready? I might put a little bit more in there. I need a drum roll in here. I'm going to right about here. And then I'm gonna mix it up. It's very important that you have the two parts water. I know a lot of people will do this and they don't do enough water. It needs to have that moisture in it. So let's say I burnt my hand really bad on the stove when I was taking out my bread. <laughs> I'm just gonna just glop it all over it, just like that. Right now, I mean, I don't have a burn, but it's very soothing, it feels very good. And I just let it on there. But remember, with burns, don't let it dry out. You wanna keep it moist, so I'd probably wrap it with a cloth. So you can make your little mason jar of it, stick it somewhere in your pantry, and whenever you need it, you can get it. And the thing is, is it's, you know, with kids, you know, they can even do it themselves. Or if they have a splinter and they're crying, you know, here you go. Just put a big blob of that on there. You got a splinter. And then hopefully, it'll just draw it right out. Okay, for some of you guys that might be confused about when, when I'm talking about a gel, this is the gel when it's mixed together with the water. It comes in a powder. You could do the powder and then just get some water and mix it, but you, then you have to mix it. This is already ready to go and it's stable and you'll have it. So I always say be proactive and be ready for any kind of emergency or anything because then you'll have it ready to go. So now I'm glad you're waited to the end because we're gonna make some deodorant. And like I said earlier, go back and learn how to make the tooth powder because when I make the deodorant, I use the powder, of course, and then also my uh, toothpaste, I use the powder. All right, so this is so simple and easy. All you're gonna need is coconut oil, baking soda, arrowroot powder, and of course, the bentonite clay. And it's so simple. Just remember, one, two, three. So you're gonna need one tablespoon of, and remember I'm using my wooden spoon, one tablespoon of the bentonite clay, two tablespoons of the arrowroot powder, two tablespoons of your baking soda, and three tablespoons of your coconut oil. One, two, and three. And you can keep it just like that, or if you want to add some good smell goods, you can add some essential oils to it. So I'm going to do some lavender and orange. I think those two go very well together. So I'm going to probably put 10 drops of the lavender to about four or five drops of the orange. And I'm going to mix it all up. So it wants to be kind of like a thick paste. So the trick here is, is when you're doing it, depending on your measurements, I'm a bad measure. If you think it, it gets too greasy, you can put a little bit more of each one of those in there until you get the texture that you like. Cause some people might like it a little bit more, you know, runny or maybe not quite so runny. So you're just gonna put it in your jar and you can make a bigger batch. So my numbers were one, two, three, one tablespoon of the bentonite clay to two tablespoons of the arrow powder two tablespoons of the baking soda, and three tablespoons of the coconut oil. Then if you wanna make more, you can double or triple it so everyone gets their own, and everyone can have their different flavors of essential oils if you'd like. But I love lavender and, and uh, orange. It smells so heavenly. You know that saying, a little dab will do ya. So the, here's my, my deodorant. So all I need is I can just get a little bit on my finger like this. Rub it and you heart, this will last you forever because you don't need that much. You just rub it in and then you just kind of rub it under your arms and then you'll smell awesome. 
Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I, um, I'm very passionate about, you know, taking care of myself as naturally as I can. And I know I jabbered a lot about stuff, but this stuff, I, I just, just from my own testimony, I tell you, it really is amazing stuff. And if you guys want to make some of these home remedies like I have, you can go to offgreenwithdougandstacy.com and check the shop tab and go to the Redmond site and then you can buy this in bulk. They have littler containers too and you can get a great discount. So I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below if you guys have heard of some of these things or you're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Just let me know. I want to hear from you and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. See you guys later.